Hi, I am Dr. Selvaraj, Professor of Surgery, Malacca Manipal Medical College, Malaysia. Welcome back to my series of surgical teaching video class. These are meant mainly for undergraduate medical students doing the surgical plexip rotation. I promise you will become competent in clinical problem solving and surgical decision making if you are going to listen these videos over and over again. In this episode, I am going to, from this episode onwards, I mean I am going to start a new series of videos on operative surgery. Because of the popular demand by the viewers of this channel, I have decided to create and upload common surgical operations. So in this video, I am going to talk about open appendicectomy. However, I am not going to show you the real surgery. I am going to discuss only the theoretical aspect of the operative surgery of the open appendicectomy. So what are the indications for appendicectomy? This is acute appendicitis and subacute appendicitis. Anesthesia you should give either general anesthesia, spinal or epidural. However, in pediatric patient, you should give only general anesthesia. Position of the patient, it is supine position with slight left tilt. So that all the small bubble lying over the cecum will be shifted to the left side. So then coming to the informed concern, before, I mean, uh, doing surgery, uh, you have to get the informed consent from the patient. So you have to explain the risk of surgery or probable complications the patient may get. The post-op addition is 4% of these patients may go for post-op additions. 5% of these patients may get intra-abdominal abscess. 2% of them may go for fecal fistula. Wound infection is very high in case of perforative appendicitis. Overall mortality is from 0.2 to it is in uh, uncomplicated appendicitis it is only 0.2 whereas if it is a perforated appendicitis the mortality may even go up to more than 10%. So you have to explain all these risks to the patient get an informed concern before I mean uh, doing surgery. So what is the incision for this common surgery? So one is the uh, uh, classical is the McBurney's incision that is denoted by the blue line here. So another one is slightly oblique incision. It is called Lance or modified McBurney's incision, this red line. And then another incision is pure, I mean exactly a transverse line that is called Rocky Davis incision. This is uh, more commonly they are doing it in US. Suppose if you want to, if the exposure is inadequate, you can extend the incision, this transverse incision, namely the Rocky Davis incision, either medially or laterally. If you extend it medially, it is called Fowler wave medial extension, where you will be cutting the rectus muscle, or at least you will be cutting the anterior rectal fascia and posterior rectal fascia. So if you are extending this transverse incision laterally, that is called Rudolfo Morrison lateral extension, where you will be cutting the lateral three muscles, the external oblique, internal oblique and the transverses. Then after uh, uh, this skin incision and cutting the subcutaneous fat, you will be seeing <coughs> the underlying glistening uh, fascia, this is external oblique aponeurosis. The medial part this is aponeurotic, whereas the lateral part, it will be muscular. So you have to incise this along the line of its fibers. So just beneath that, you will be seeing the two muscles. So namely the internal oblique and the transverse muscle. Both you can, you have to, you should not cut it, you have to split it. So you can do it after making a small hole in the muscle. Either you can use a scissor or you can use a, uh, uh, fingers that is what I used to do put two of your fingers inside and just 
uh, I mean bluntly you have to dissect it or you can put two Richardson retractors and bluntly you can uh, uh, you can dissect this one so the, you are only splitting the muscle across its fibers then after splitting this one you will be seeing the underlying peritoneum so you have to catch hold of the peritoneum with two hemostates one by one and then you have to cut open this peritoneum but before cutting it you have to pinch the area and make sure that you are not catching either the underlying bowel or the momentum make sure that nothing is under you are not catching uh, either the uh, uh, bowel or the momentum then you have to cut it with a knife here they have shown it as scissors but usually I will do it uh, with a knife obliquely you have to cut it immediately after opening the uh, peritoneum sometimes you may see some fluid may come out the turbid fluid may come out if it is frank pus or whatever may be the discharge you have to send it for culture and you have to take a swab and you have to send it for culture and sensitivity so then you have to now you have gone into the peritoneal cavity so you have to search for the cecum sometimes there may be small bubble lying maybe lying over the cecum so you have to push all those things to the medial side then you can identify the cecum by uh, looking into the tinea coli that is the uh, hallmark sign for the cecum then you can just catch hold of this tinea coli with a Babcock forceps and you can pull it out the cecum you can pull it out by doing what is called a rocking movement you can use uh, either the Babcock or you can even use a dry gas catch hold of the cecum and just try to pull it out this is how you have to take it out the three tinea coli converge at the base of the appendix so the confluence of all these three tinea coli is the base of the appendix so before going further let us review a, a, a few points in the anatomy of the appendix so appendix is yeah it is attached to the base of the cecum where the three tinea coli converge and this is the appendix this is this looks inflamed so this is the uh, cecum and this is the ascending colon and this is the terminal ileum so the blood supply to the appendix is through the meso appendix that is appendicular artery which is a branch of iliocolic artery the iliocolic artery in turn is a branch of superior mesenteric artery so this appendix can lie in like a, a face of a clock it can lie at 12 o'clock position or 1 o'clock position it may be on any position so it may be pre ileal or post ileal or it may be pelvic or it may be uh, parasical or sometimes it may be retrasical these are the common position for the appendix tip may be anywhere it is variable but always the base is always constant so base is nothing but the confluence of these three tinea coli so after identifying the appendix so you have to uh, do what is called skeletonization of the meso appendix this you can do you have to clamp and divide the meso appendix serially first you have to begin it ultimately you have to cut it like this so completely you have to devascularize the appendix then you have to crush the base of the appendix either with a right angle forceps like this or you can use a straight artery forceps just crush it for a few minutes then you have to remove that hemostate and then you have to reapply few centimeters distal to this area here somewhere here so then you have to uh, put a ligature over the crush mark here you have to put a ligature usually i use vicryl for this one so you have to ligate this area then you have to transect some 0.5 centimeter distally with a knife so you have to cut it and then you have to dispose this knife and then this appendix and this clamp separately you have to but before cutting it you can place a gas piece just beneath that so that whatever spillage is coming out it will get soaked only in the gas piece so you have to remove that gas piece and you have to give this knife and appendix along with this hemostate everything you have to give to the uh, um, uh, to the scrub nurse so that they, they will uh, dispose it separately so there is some alternate method instead of this right angle 
uh, uh, forceps or the mixed forceps you can use a uh, straight artery forceps or you can use a linear stapler also this is a GIA stapler not only in the laparoscopic surgery even in open surgery you can use it to divide both the meso appendix as well as the base of the appendix so then what to do with the appendicular stem usually I won't bury I never so far I have never buried the appendix stem but all my patients so far there is uh, there was no uh, complication at all but the classically they recommend so you have to bury the appendicular stem by making either a pursing suture or a, a Z stitch that is just just step stitch you have to make and then you have to invert this stump inside so that you want to avoid any mucosal formation but usually I will touch the protruding uh, uh, mucosa or the appendix with a cautery so I will cauterize it and then I won't I never bury this stump so suppose if the appendix is lying retrocycle how to handle this one so you may not be able to deliver the tip of the appendix because it is adherent it is retrocycle so now in this case you have to make a small window at the base of the appendix then you have to crush the base of the appendix with a straight artery forceps and then you have to put a ligature there and then you have to apply a clamp just distal to this ligature and then first you have to divide the appendix from the base that you have to do it first and this method of appendicectomy is called anti-grade appendicectomy then after uh, I mean uh, dividing this appendix you can either bury this stump or you can just touch it with a, a cautery then you have to uh, try to mobilize the appendix so this is the meso appendix so you have to serially you have to clamp the meso appendix until you are going to reach the tip of the appendix but sometimes you will uh, encounter the peritoneum laterally here so then you have to divide that uh, congenital uh, line of fusion that is told white line of told you have to divide it and then you have to mobilize the uh, cecum as if you are going to do uh, this is what we are we used to do in hemicolectomy but it is limited only for the not the entire uh, ascending colon only uh, in the in the part where there is cecum you have to divide that white line of told then you have to uh, mobilize the cecum and then easily you can under vision you can see you can divide this peritoneum and you can go uh, up to the tip of the appendix sometimes if the tip of appendix if it goes uh, very high say up to the even sometimes subhepatic region you are likely to injure two structures so you have to beware of injuring the duodenum or injuring the right ureter these injuries you should avoid so finally before closing the peritoneum you have to wash the peritoneal cavity locally not the general peritoneal cavity only this area you have to wash with povidine iodine then close the peritoneum with vicryl with a continuous suture here then you have to close the muscle both the muscles you can close with the same vicryl but here interrupted suture you have to use then finally you have to close the external oblique aponeurosis this you can do either continuous or interrupted and finally you can close the skin with subcuticular stitch so thank you very much for watching this video but I recommend after seeing this video I recommend all of you to go and watch the real open appendicectomy surgery in the following two links these are uh, YouTube videos which you can go and you can visualize it so after going through these videos my video and these two videos it is you can just you can do uh, this is mainly for the surgical trainees you can do what is called a mental rehearsal for the actual surgery when so if you are watching these videos when you are going to actually encounter or actually going to do a surgery it will be easier for you so if you think that these videos are very useful kindly share with your friends so thank you once again for watching this video okay bye bye until we are going to meet in an another video bye